Chers collègues, bonjour. Je m'appelle Maria, Maria Govac. Pour ceux qui ne me connaissent pas, et je suis donc membre du comité de Renouveau Démocratie, le syndicat qui vous, a, qui vous accompagne depuis très longtemps. Et justement, depuis la pandémie, nous sommes très actifs au niveau de conférences, pour lancer des conférences, pour vous assister en virtuel. Aujourd'hui, nous avons euh, un grand plaisir d'avoir de nouveau avec nous euh, notre coach Alexia Solé. Je dis notre coach parce que vous avez déjà, Alexia, travaillé avec nous et pour nous euh, pendant, avant les vacances. Vos conférences ont été hautement appréciées. Donc, nous avons décidé d'accompagner, de continuer à accompagner des collègues, d'autant plus qu'il y a la nouvelle situation, un changement qui qui s'est créé, qui est imposé, donc ça veut dire le retour au bureau. Aujourd'hui, nous allons aborder justement la question de changement. Le changement nous accompagne au cours de, ma, de notre vie, de tous les jours. Nous avons tout le temps, il y a des petits changements, des grands changements. Et donc, il est important de pouvoir savoir comment gérer les changements, comment être... Euh, à la hauteur de ces tâches familiales, professionnelles, tout en gardant notre efficacité, bonne humeur et être responsable pour plein de tâches qu'on nous impose. Donc, je vous conseille maintenant de vous ouvrir à ce que Alexia va nous dire aujourd'hui dans une conférence qui va être cette fois-ci gérée en anglais. C'est pour cela que je me permets de vous accueillir en français. Donc, Alexia fait un effort parce que c'est quand même sa deuxième langue. Merci beaucoup, Alexia. Et donc, elle sera accompagnée de, 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 de support donc PowerPoint Presentation et qui sera à votre disposition aussi bien que la conférence est enregistrée, donc pour ceux qui n'ont pas pu nous joindre, il y en avait pas mal de collègues qui ont avaient des empêchements, nous allons la poster sur notre site. Donc maintenant, je vous souhaite une excellente conférence. Je laisse la parole à Alexia. Hello Alexia, how are you today? Hello Maria, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm very pleased to see you all today. Thank you very much. So today we are going to talk about evolution. It's um, very important. Uh, we are going to see that uh, ev you are living evolution at work. And this is important because um, we are going to go further uh, on emotional energy dimension that we saw in the conference last May, how to boost my energy daily. And we'll see that evolution can generate emotions like joy, but also fear, anger, or sadness. That's why it's important to know how to boost your energy, your emotional energy, when you're faced, when you're confronted with evolution and change. So just to To introduce myself, Alexia Solé, I'm certified professional coach. I act for well-being and a high level of engagement in organizations. I graduated with a Master of International Management at Neoma Business School. And I, I founded my company uh, after 12 years working in mass consumption for global corporations. Evolution is all around, weather, nature, animals, earth, human beings, organizations, administrations, values, society, lifestyles, it's all around. And as human beings, we are also in constant evolution. And we naturally adapt to these evolutions, but sometimes, we can um, we resist to some uh, evolution to some evolutions and to some changes because some changes can generate fear anger or sadness as i told you so it would be important to know how to deal with uh, these emotions and with these evolutions this is what we are going to see in uh, in this conference And we'll see that the question is not to know if we resist or if we adapt to changes. The question is 
do I have control of this change? Do I have control of this evolution? Does something depend on me? Do I have control on the way to respond to these evolutions? And what can I do to feel happy in, in confronted with these changes? So let's have a look at the program of this hour. I'm going to share my presentation. Can you see it? Yes. Yes, good. So what the program? We are going to talk about the different perceptions of change. And then we will see what are the different changes of uh, the different stages of the change curve. We are going to talk about keys to develop resilient skills and then you'll have time as usual to elaborate your individual action plan. And then there will, we will have a time for questions before concluding. So let's start. If you can write on a piece of paper, one recent personal or professional significant change you're leaving, you can write it on a piece of paper. Mm. And when, when it's good for you, we are going to do all together an exercise. What's this exercise about the different perceptions of change? We are going to change something on us, you and I. We are going to make a physical change. I'm going to stop my video. You can do so if you want. And I just come back in a few seconds and I invite you to, to do the same, to, to make a physical change. I doubt the Google is the screen. Here I am, I'm back. I have changed so three things on me. Could you share in the chat what I have changed on me? Can you see what I've changed on me? The scarf, thank you, Andrea, absolutely, yes. Andrea and Sophie. Another change you can observe. Is there another ID? No. Changement de vest, no? My color, absolutely. Color. Oui. Yeah, absolutely. Eyes, no. Color of the vest. <laughs> Color of the vest, <laughs> the jacket. Of the, of My the hair, jacket. sorry. No. Not hair, no. The, the last change is, is this. my pins. But we haven't seen it. Yes. Okay. It was difficult. This one was difficult. Okay, good. So change can be perceived in three different ways. One, something we lose, my scarf. Two, something we gain, my pins. 
three, no lose, no gain, just an evolution. So my color. What about you? What change did you do a few minutes ago? Did you took something off? Did you added something on you? Or did you just made a, an evolution? Oh, approuvé. Oh. You can just reflect on that first reaction you had in front of a change. And this is an exercise. Don't make global conclusion on your perception of change. Just take it as an information. We are going to talk about the management of change. Maybe you know that curve. We are going to see what happened inside us in front of a significant change. Here is the Kubler-Ross curve of change. This curve is very popular and powerful model. It's used to understand the stages of personal transition in front of a change. It helps to explain the impact of a change on individuals. It helps to predict how people react while facing a big change. That curve is very useful. Why? Because thanks to it, you can help yourself to make your own personal transition and make sure that you have all the support and guidance you need. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross has defined different stages of change. First stage is the stage of shock or denial. When you, when you know the change, when you're faced to a change, sometimes you can react by shock or denial. Then anger, resistance, fear come come up and then a time for acceptance is the time of acceptations with hope and positivity that's stage three and finally commitment to engage towards a better future by being conscious conscious of the different stages you are going through the change more enlightened and quickly Let's see it just in detail. As I just told you, when the change comes first, reaction is often shock and denial. You can feel overwhelmed. We often need information at this stage. We need to understand what happened. Then people tend to react to this change. If the change is perceived negatively, concerns appears and, and most of the time, anger, fear, sadness, and um, resistance. Resistance can be expressed actively or passively. Then you have, you have the stage where uh, it's, it's written depression. What is that? It's really danger zone. Why is danger zone for yourself and your well-being, because if it's too long, you could feel exhaustion because you are, you are just in resistance. So you have a lot of negative emotion. And when it takes too long, you can feel exhausted. It's not good for your well-being and your emotional balance. It's a stressful and unpleasant state. It's important to be indulgent with yourself at this stage and with your feelings. For everyone, it's better to go to the next stage with acceptance, curiosity, and some optimism. When we are at this stage of curiosity and hope, we stop focusing on what we have lost we start to let go and to accept the changes. This is the turning point. 
begin exploring what the change means. We take a step back from the major change and think about what's good and not so good and how we must adapt. Acceptance is growing. This is a key for a better future. Don't hesitate to explore here all opportunities with this renewal situation. By the final stage of commitment, we start to embrace the new way and embrace improvements. It's a good time to have a look on your journey from the shock and congratulate yourself on what you have achieved. To illustrate, to illustrate this curve, let's take an example. Um, I took the example of COVID crisis and especially uh, the moment of the first lockdown. The change was lockdown for everyone. At the moment of the announcement, the reaction were surprise, shock, and sometimes denial. Some people said it's impossible, it, can, it can't happen. They are in stage one. Then resistance appears with fear and anger. Some people thought, I'm scared. It impacts my freedom. How can they do that? I'm very upset and frustrated that they have made such a decision. Some people felt no more motivation. And then next stage comes up. It's the stage of acceptation, acceptance. It's when people accept it that this is going to happen. And finally, stage four, where people started to project themselves into this new situation. They started to feel the new benefits from the change. To have more rest, for instance, to fo more focus on themselves, on their family. And then new discussions appeared and people perceived to what extent it would facilitate their well-being. I really insist on that curve on the stage of acceptance. This is really the turning point. Acceptation is fundamental when you become conscious that you have no control over the change. You are faced, you are, you are faced with two choices when you are in front of a change you have no control over. First is keeping resisting. When you keep in resisting, it, 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 um, it impacts your mental, uh, mental energy and emotional balance. You spend a lot of negative energy. But the first choice, resisting. And the second choice is to accept the situation that you can feel better. Could you please write on your piece of paper about the change you noted at the beginning of the conference. At, what, at which stage you are in front of the significant change you wrote on your paper? Are you at stage one, shock and denial? Two, of resistance? Three, of acceptation? Or four, of commitment? It's just for you. How to go from resistance to well being? When you are in shock, denial, when you have anger, fear, or sadness, it's a very uncomfortable situation. Emotion can be amplified and excessive. It's really hard to find perspective and solution at this stage. 
in order to help you, you can, you can keep in mind that this stage will, will lead you to acceptance. It's important to accept these feelings and the situation. This is the open door of the beginning of positivity and creativity to find solution and the way to adapt the, to the situation. It will lead you to the next stage where you can see long-term perspectives. Confronted with the situation you have no control over, the situation is to accept. It's easy to say, hard to do, I know. But this is the obligatory passage. And once you have accepted the situation, you can find control again over the way you are going to respond to that change. If you remain at stage just before acceptation, you will remain in resistance. <coughs> resistance will cost you a lot of energy. And in the long term, you will suffer from negative emotion, mind overload, and physical stress. To resume, the two things to do when you're confronted with a significant change of which you have no control over is one, to let yourself go, two, to accept the situation. Next conference, we'll see how to manage emotion and how to become partner with your emotions to experience more well-being. Let's do all together an exercise to appease anger when you are at this stage, thanks to a visualization exercise. So you can close your eyes, close your eyes and take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Think about a significant anger you feel or you recently felt. Once you get it, visualize the anger as an erupting volcano. As what? You can see boiling lava flowing out and devastating everything in its path. You can hear ramblings, stones, and dust explosions. Then lava is freezing and looks like magnificent, magnificent crystals. Rumblings and explosions subside. Little by little, fumes disappear. As if you were in a speed up movie, the nature reasserts itself. The sun is coming back. Vegetation is growing, green, flowered and persistent. With it, your calm is coming back. Reflect on how you feel right now. This This is an exercise that you can use everywhere at any time you feel anger just to appease this anger and to find emotional balance.
we can accelerate change at work or at home, as a manager or a team member, as family or as friend, we all have the ability to help people around us to cross the stages of change. By paying attention to our peers, we all have the ability to facilitate their well-being. How? Let's see some guidelines. This is the same curve. At first stage, when the big change is announced and perceived negatively, of course, we have, been, we have seen that there is a shock. The shock can give way to consideration, paralysis, and reality refusal with denial. Remember, people often say it's not possible. It can't be true. At this stage, the important things to do are to talk, to share feelings, to understand the situation. If you recognize someone at this stage, in order to help the person, you can listen to him or her actively with authenticity, sincerity, kindness, and no judgment. You can let the person express their fear, their anger, their sadness, and be comprehensive without trying to reason with the person. All these behaviors reassure. At next stage, when people feel sadness, remember, people could express this way. It's no use, I'll never get through it. The appropriate behavior is empathy, humanity, and solidarity. Remember, this stage is danger zone. People could sink into depression or burn out. Most of the time, they are not conscious of their states. It's important to give them the opportunity to express their needs. We all have the ability to try to reduce the negative consequences by these behaviors. What are the benefits for you to be conscious of that curve? The first benefit is that you feel better because you know the different stages of the curve and you know that it will lead you to positivity and commitment. The second benefit is that managing change gives you drive. You go on undergoing the change, of course, but you are aware of the different stages so you can pilot yourself. You can find resources to help you to go on to the next stage. The third benefit is that it leads to trying to get positive outcome from that change. The consciousness of that curve can help you to accelerate change and improve your well-being and commitment. In organizations, it allows managers to help people in a period of change. It helps organizations to be more performant and to integrate the change more quickly. To help, to help change, resilience, it's, uh, it's a very interesting skill. According to Penn University, several skills constitute a resilient state of mind. Let's see them, and we are going to see how to ramp up resilience. First skills that first skill that help to develop resilience is, is self-awareness. Self-awareness is the ability to pay attention to your thoughts, 
emotions, behaviors, and physical reactions. How can you improve self-awareness? Meditation is a very good best practice to improve self-awareness. Second skill is strength of character. Strength of character is the ability to use one-stop strengths to engage authentically, to overcome challenge and create a life aligned with one's value. You can develop it when you identify your strengths and your deep values. And if you pay attention to acting every day in regard to your deep values to feel good and aligned. Third skill is self-regulation. Self-regulation is the ability to change one's thought, emotion, behavior in the service of a desired outcome. To, to, to develop self-regulation, you can also meditate, you can practice mindfulness, and we will see how to practice mindfulness in um, another conference. It's important to raise your pleasure and to have deep abdominal breathing. It's very useful for self-regulation, to improve self-regulation. Another skill to develop resilience is to Keep connection. To keep connection is the ability to build and maintain strong and trusting relationship. For instance, you can call and see your close friends. You can activate social network with people you care for. At work, you can organize team building workshops have breakfast, lunch, organize after work drinks. Next skills is mental agility. How to improve mental agility? Mental agility is the ability to look a situation from multiple perspectives and to think creatively and flexibly. To develop mental agility, you can just take a step back from the situation. You can change environment to go on holidays, to work in nature. You'll see that it will improve creativity and you will see the situation in a different way. And finally, to develop resilience, Optimism will be also very important. Optimism is the ability to notice and expect the positive, to focus on what you can control and take purposeful action. To develop optimism, what can you do? You can cultivate positive thinking. You can take advantage of those little moments of joy on a daily basis. Another tip is also to love more. We are going to, to take an example to see how to develop resilient skills in a situation of you, what you experience, um, which is flex desk. I experienced flex desk in my past company. I know what you're living. How to develop resilient skills in that situation. Confronted with this big change, you can develop self-awareness. So what can you do? Self-awareness is to pay attention on yourself. You can ask yourself, how do I feel? Do I feel sad? Do I feel angry? 
Do I feel scared? Do I feel stressed, oppressed? Does it impact me physically with a lack of sleep, for instance? Does it impact my thoughts, my mind? When you ask yourself this question, you take care of yourself. Then you can use your strengths of character. Can be lots of strengths. For example, if one of your strengths is creativity, maybe it would be important to think about new ways of working. If one of your strengths is open mind, Maybe you can reflect on the situation and explore the different point of views. If your strength is integrity, you can tell your truth authentically and, and, um, and act as you are. If your strength is braver, you won't step back in front of difficulties and finally, if your one of your strengths is kindness, you will keep on doing actions for others. Just think about your strengths. Can be other other strengths, of course. Huh? This was just examples, and reflect how how you can use these strengths to help you in that change. Self-regulation, the intention of self-regulation is clear. It's to feel better, it's to feel good in the situation. So when you feel negative emotion about flex desk, flex desk for instance, you, you can try to do something that gives you pleasure. As we seen, it can be, for example, to read a passionate book, can be listen to a music you love, everything that gives you pleasure. This will help you to maintain emotional balance. You can stay connected with colleagues you care for, also with people you love. This will help you in the situation. In mental agility, Maybe you can try to see the situation from a different point of view. Maybe the, the situation will be the occasion to create new professional relationships at work, to develop communication with the whole team or another thing. And finally, try to cultivate optimism and positive thinking. It means maybe to pay attention to daily moments of joy at work. And maybe you can try to see opportunities to give birth to new projects or something that give you just pleasure at work. Develop resilience, it's really hard work. And as all routines that we have seen, it's important to practice the development of all that skills step by step, just one action by one action, just in the target to feel better. This is the only target is that you feel better in that change. And you will see that if you have just one action, maybe in all of those, all those skills, you, you will find, you will feel better. We are going to make an exercise to raise optimism. It's called happy memory chuckle. So you can close your eyes once again and take also a deep breath in and a long breath out. Go back in past time and find a truly happy memory in a time 
when you felt safe, mm -hmm. loved, surrounded, people you loved. In quale dei sistemi in questo system thinking può essere usato? E ho scritto. And when you all laughed. In a time when you felt safe, loved, and surrounded by people you love, and when you all loved. Take time to connect with this memory. Laughing now, as if you were back then, it normally takes one or two minutes to start to recreate the associated emotion. If it was difficult to connect with this memory, I invite you to make this exercise maybe later, just when you are in good condition to, to go on this emotion and to remember a really great moment with people you care for and reflect on what you feel. How do you feel at this moment? As I told you, with mental agility, another best practice to change is to change the way we look at a situation. Let's continue with an exercise. I am going to show you some pictures. Sometimes we all look at the same picture or we all observe the same situation and we can see different things. In this picture, you can see here different pictures. From the first one, maybe you know it, you can see a young woman. But if you look closer and try to change the way you look at this picture, you will see an old woman. Can you see it? Can you please share it if everybody can see it in the chat? Yes. Thank you, Andrea. Good. Thank you. The second picture is from the Ukrainian Oleg Shukliyak. And you can see here that the man's girls is in the sky. And finally, the third picture, they are an advertising, Indian advertising campaign for pet adoption. And we can see dogs, cats, and people and the family. My message here is that our brain is a filter. It receives information from the environment, from the situation. It filters and analyzes the information. And then the brain decides the way to react. The problem is that there are lots of information in this filter. Don't hesitate to challenge your brain sometimes, to open yourself to a new point of view when necessary. Probably you can find positivity from a negative first perceived situation. This positivity will raise your global well-being and your emotional energy. 
to help you to change the way you look at a situation, you can ask yourself, to what extent can this change be an opportunity? And maybe you can reflect on it about the change you wrote at the beginning of the presentation. To what extent can this change be an opportunity for you? You can write something right now if you, if you have an, an idea. My message is that we all have the ability to see a situation from a different point of view and we can choose the way we look at the different situations. Could you share in the chat, what do you realize about change, about the stages, about everything we have seen here? Someone want to, to share something? What do you think about it? Thank you, Susanna. Changes are inevitable. The more we resist, the worse it gets. It's a process and takes time. Gabriel, thank you. Yes, it takes time, absolutely. And it's important to, to be okay with that, to accept that. Sometimes it's very hard. We have seen that there are some stages that are very, very unpleasant, but this is the process. And the more quickly we'll go to the next stage, more well-being we will experience. Okay, well, good, thank you. Now it's time to elaborate your personal action plan. You wrote a significant change you're leaving at the beginning of the conference. Maybe you can write your personal way to that you want to respond to that change or if it's not related to, to this example, Maybe you, you can write something that you would like to change in your reaction to evolution or you would like an action that you would like to put in place just to feel better. I just give you a few seconds and then we will go to questions. So if you want to ask questions in the chat at the same time, it's, it would be great. Perhaps one resists because on the, the other side of the challenge, we face to unknown. Yes, absolutely. And um, facing the unknown can raise a lot of fear, maybe anger. This is normal, but maybe fear. So that's why we resist. We will see in the next conference how we can deal with fear, how we can react to, to fear. Fear is because we need to protect ourselves. So it's uh, an important alert and warning. Yes, fear and anxiety. But in the curve of change, when you're in resistance, 
it's not a time to see opportunities. So the stage in that curve, the next stage is acceptation. This is hard to accept the fear, to accept that this is very uncomfortable, but it's not a time to see opportunities. You'll see opportunities when you will have accepted. When you accept, you, you will find emotional balance. And when you feel emotional balance, it will lead you to optimism and to creativity to find solution. And when you find different solutions, different opportunities, so it will lead you to commitment to action for better future. But this is really hard stage. Thank you, Andrea. Is there any questions more? No more questions, as I can see. Oh, okay. So we are going to conclude. Could you share in the chat just your conclusion word? What word do you... What word is raising from you? Change can be an opportunity. Yes. Thank you. Another conclusion word for you? No, all right. It's just something you can keep in mind. So if you want just to, to write it in your piece of paper, being flexible, both mentally and physically. It's key to wait well. Yeah, absolutely. Then can spark personal growth. Yeah. The state of mind is very important to change face. Absolutely. I took a decision to change, right? Thank you, Vera. Good. Good, thank you all. I am going to conclude. To conclude. All things around us, we have seen it are in constant evolutions. Evolution is part of life. Sometimes it's very hard to accept change and it's normal and be indulgent with yourself. We all have the resources inside us to manage change with more serenity and positivity. That's the way to go, to feel better and to feel good. So thank you all for your participation. I, uh, I am very pleased to, to see you all today. And um, thank you, Maria. Thank you, Blondine. Thank you, Awa, for your help in the organization of this conference. And we will see you uh, at the next, in the next conference about emotions, when we will see how to become partner with your emotions, with joy, fear, anger, and sadness. And then we'll have a conference about mindfulness, how to develop mindfulness at work. Thank you all. Thank and you. Thank you, is... Andrea. And, uh, no, Alexa, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Alexia. Um, it was really very interesting. And I think that maybe uh, the colleagues have some some questions before uh, before the end of the uh, you can you can take a floor if you want to share to the, the chat do you have any questions because of course the changing 
And what you have told us is very important. We know that but sometimes it's very complicated to deal with what, what we have learned, how to, uh, how to implement in the everyday. This is not very easy. Do you have any um, advices um, how to deal for, for the people who cannot accept, for example? Do you have any questions like that? No, apparently we don't have any. And the exercise to accept is, uh, is very hard. Just to be conscious that uh, this is a step and uh, it's important to, to accept, to, to, to let go. If you have no control over the change, when you have control over the change, so you can act to, to make evolutions, but sometimes we don't have control over it. And if you want to feel good, it's better to accept the change. And then once you have accepted, you can find solutions to feel better in that change. Yeah. And I think that the next session will be um, devoted to how to be partner with your emotion. This is maybe the way of this acceptance uh, because this, we, we are going through these this, uh, processes of acceptance through uh, the different uh, state of mind or uh, our body, etc., etc. So I invite all colleagues to, I will send the, 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 the invitation. It will be already in Thursday, so on 30th of um, September, so in a few days. And the last one will be in 7th of October, so we leave you a bit uh, a time for the next mindful, mindfulness. And um, so I would like just to, to remind you that it's in, on Thursday and then 7th of October. So thank you very, very much. If we don't have any questions, I would like to wish you an excellent day and a week because we, are, we have just started a week. Thank you, Alexia. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. See you soon.